Hey everyone, I'm Adam, and this is The New Woodworker. All right, friends, well, thank you for joining me today for another episode of The New Woodworker. But we're doing a little exterior work today on an 1880s Victorian. This happens to be my family's home that we've been working on for the past few years. Take a look at that video, you'll see where we started. The house looks great. I mean, it looks beautiful. Now, the exterior was just painted. We also had an entirely new roof from the decking out put on, all new windows throughout the house, all new gutters, new fascia, new soffits where necessary because I tried to keep a lot of the original details and the trim and the dental molding and the corbels, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there's some touch up that I've got to do right now. Now, my guys and I are kind of going around and doing our punch list. But what do you do when you've got rotted wood that you can't replace? Here's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna use Automotive Bondo to patch that wood. Now, actually, ooh, I, sh I forgot to tell you guys and gals, I'm enjoying this uh, menthol chew stick here by uh, Zero Picks. Now, if any of you guys and gals are trying to quit smoking, this is great to have in your mouth. No, I don't smoke, I never have really, but I like to have something going on in my mouth all day. It keeps me a little, uh, a little more relaxed, you know what I'm saying? And it helps me to also kind of uh, keep my own addictions at bay. Now this menthol stick contains no nicotine and it just, it lasts a very long time. I've actually been through a lot of different brands and Zero Picks is a really good brand, okay. There we go, let's move on. Now if you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that I used to own and operate an auto body shop. I did a lot of custom motorcycle work, I built bobbers and choppers and cafe racers, but I did a lot of body work on classic cars. So Bondo obviously is, is uh, one of my best friends, we've gotten pretty close. I avoid trying to use it often, but you always have to use a little. Did you know that you can use Bondo on wood? Here you go. Now there are many products out there to fill rotted wood. And then there's also wooden hardeners that you can use for soft wood. And then it hardens the wood and creates this, this, this dense material that is paintable, sandable. And, and it's okay, but it takes a while to work with. And not all of them really work well. Now in my experience, I feel like Bondo has a little more flex to it than wood filler. So let's get going and mix up some Bondo so my painters can finish painting that spot. Now in your spackle tool kit, I'm sure you all have your spackle pan, but I hope you also have a spackling hawk. Now this hawk is great for cement work, for spackle work, and for a lot more things. When mixing up your Bondo, typically you'll do it on a piece of cardboard, I prefer just popping it onto my hawk. I use my hawk for a lot of things. I also keep a specific knife for things like this, just a beater knife for mixing things that are not spackle. All right, now the key to mixing up Bondo is using the right amount of hardener to the Bondo product. Because if you use too much hardener, it sets up too quickly and then you won't be able to use it. So. We've got our hawk, which will be our mixing tray. We've got our rough putty knife. I've got my mixing stick, and we're gonna open the can up. And there's our Bondo product. Smells great. Mm, oh my. <clears throat> Before I go mixing anything up here, I want to prep the area so that I'm ready to go. I'm ready to pop it on there. There's no time in waiting. So let's get the ladder set up and get up there. So I don't know if I've told you guys and gals yet, but in two weeks I'll be getting a spinal fusion and a few other uh, procedures done to my lower back. Uh, I've been in excruciating daily chronic pain since 2003, and I've lived with it this long, and I, I just can't do it anymore. So uh, getting up and down the ladders is a little precarious for me. It feels terrible, but I gotta do it right now anyway. 
Now the area is quite soft, as you can see here, but we're gonna try to utilize this bit of wood and just get in there and right here. The nice thing is the majority of the wood around the rest of the house is really solid and hard. Um, I'm very, very pleased with the condition of this woodwork. There's very few spots that are rotted or soft. Now you don't want to mix more than you're going to be working with. Or it's better to mix small amounts than large amounts. But I already know I need a fair amount. So we pop a little line of hardener on there. We're going to mix that bad boy up. Get it pink. I'm not using a lot of hardener because it's warm out today and I don't want it to pre-harden. On a warm day, you've got to be very careful with using too much hardener. All right, there's our mix. We're going to reuse that stick. Let's get our putty knife and let's get up there. Now you don't want your first coat to be thick and heavy because it's going to sag or droop and then it's gonna just make a mess. So you wanna fill in your hole, get it into the divots, fill most of the wood so that the bondo is adhering to most of the pieces of wood. So then my second coat will basically just be a little top coat, smoothing everything out, fill in the final cracks, and then it's ready to sand. Now when I fill using bondo, it's the same procedure that I use for spackling which is basically a sandless procedure. 90% of the time, it's unnecessary to have to sand spackle if you're doing it the right way with three coats, putting them on properly over top of each other. Now, that's my mentality for most of the spackling that I do. It's basically the same thing here with the Bondo. If I do two good smooth coats, if I just give that nice top a, a smooth finish, then there's really gonna be no sanding required. So let's give it time to set up, which we call a flash time. We're gonna let that flash. All right, now while we're waiting for that to set up, I'm gonna use this time to explain something. Always clean your tools in between, during, and periodically throughout the job. I can't stand when I'm working with dirty tools. In other words, clean your tools. Oh, do you think it's rude for me to be talking with a chew stick in my mouth? Is that kind of like people talking with food in their mouth? Because I can't stand that. I can't, I can't stand talking to someone who's eating and they're chewing while they're talking. I, I, I don't like that. So is that similar to the chew stick? I, I don't know. L let me know. Maybe it is. Just make it pink. That's all. You know, just make it pink. You know, get some... Oh, man, I'm making a mess now. See, here's the problem. If you don't pay attention, I looked at the camera instead of what I was doing. Now, now I made a mess. Gosh darn it. All right. Let's get up there. Because it's, uh going to harden on me. Alright, 
Now, if this was a finished area, meaning an area that really needed to be finished perfectly, what I would do right now before it hardens up is take a wet sponge and just gently kind of massage everything perfectly smooth. That gets rid of the small imperfections, the little holes, the tiny bubbles, the little lines that you get from your putty knife. I'm not worried about that. This is an exterior spot. This is not even gonna require any sanding. The way that I've got it finished here is fine for where it is. It's getting painted and it's done. And it's done right and it's done well and it's gonna hold up for many years to come. So let's take a look. friends well here at the new woodworker I keep it real with you I tell you what to do as well as what not to do now if you notice in the video my son came out he started talking to me then chatter popped his head through that window where he's working and he started talking to me and, and then I got on my phone and I started doing other things and I completely let my leftover Bondo harden and what is Bondo it bonds to metal. So, that is, that is on there. Okay, you know what I mean? Like, Bondo's a good product. It does the job. Um, I will scrape that off, chisel it off, and uh, this will be now my rough uh, body hawk. And I will get a new hawk. Actually, I have like three more in the basement that I'll just use. All right, everyone, let's get going because I have so much work to do today, it's not even funny. Um, I hope that you learned something from this video. That is literally, hold on, that, wait, that is ready for paint. Nothing else needs to be done, it's ready. And guys and gals, trust me, listen, I, I've been doing that for years. I've seen it hold up, hold on, wait. That's uh, woo. so the camera doesn't catch the eyes with glasses on sometimes, but I've been doing this process for a long time. I've been using Bondo for a very long time, actually since I was a kid. My stepfather, when I was about 10 or 11, when my mom got remarried, he used a lot of Bondo for his automotive repairs, and that's how I got started with it. Bondo's a great product, guys and gals. I hope that you are able to apply this to a project that you're working on. I hope that it makes your life easier. I ask you to please subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, tap the bell to receive notifications anytime I release a new video. And I want to, wait, I'm going to wait till I'm in focus. I want to thank you all for watching. I really, really appreciate each and every, oh my gosh. All right. Is that better? Come on. Get my eye, would you? There we go. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. I really appreciate it. Oh, I'm getting flagged down there. I got to I got to go. All right, guys and gals, thanks again.